I think that's such an important topic in the sense that there's, uh, there's a contentiousness in this field of GMO that's politically charged, socially charged, almost religiously charged because it's the food. It's the food we're feeding to our children and there's an emotional intensity to this topic. And one of the things that's weakened our position as consumers is the sound of, this almost sounds like a conspiracy theory, right? But in fact, it's not. This is just the march of human behavior and big business over a century. First of all, what's a GMO? Genetically modified organism. They're swapping individual genes or sequences of genes, pulling it out of one organism's DNA and putting it into another organism's DNA. The process itself creates a lot of problems and they don't even focus on that. They focus on the traits. So here are the traits. Now, there are five major genetically modified food crops, soy, corn, cotton, canola, sugar beets, also a sixth alfalfa used as hay for animals. All of those six are engineered with a trait called herbicide tolerance. They take a gene, generally from bacteria, and put it into the DNA of the plants so that the plants can be sprayed with certain weed killers that would normally kill them. So Roundup Ready crops can be sprayed with Roundup. Liberty Link crops can be sprayed with Liberty. And the crops absorb these weed killers, which are poisonous, and we eat them. So we'll be talking about in the summit what could go wrong by eating a weed killer. The other type of crops are the BT producing crops. BT is Bacillus thuringiensis. Basically, it's a poison. It's an insecticide. It breaks open the stomach of insects to kill them. It comes from a natural soil bacteria. So they take the gene out of the bacterium, put it into the DNA of corn and cotton plants. So now these plants are registered pesticides. So about 80% of the crops that are genetically engineered are engineered not to die when sprayed with poisonous weed killer, and about 20% produce a poisonous bug killer. So our food won't die, but everything else around it dies. The bugs, the worms in the soil, all the weeds. And the good can, bacteria in the, the soil. The good bacteria, it soaks into the plant, and it does not wash off. The problem with that is that there's a chemical in it called glyphosate, which destroys our gut bacteria. 70% of our immune system is there. Without that gut bacteria, we can't produce tryptophan. Without tryptophan, our bodies don't produce serotonin. Without serotonin, we can't regulate blood sugar. An incredible statistic is only 0.1%, one thousandth of a percent of the glyphosate or Roundup that's sprayed worldwide actually hits its target. Wow. 99.9% .9 of this chemical is going right into our water systems as wash off and never reaches its therapeutic target of the weed, if you will. The terrifying thing about that toxin is that it is water soluble and nature makes the vast majority of its toxins in the form of lipid or fat soluble toxin and that's important because those toxins can be sequestered away by mycelium in the soil by the fungi or can be sequestered away by your fat cells so it's not in your bloodstream to be exposed to your brain and other things. So fat soluble toxins are kind of nature's approach. Water soluble toxins is man-made approach is very frightening because it goes everywhere. Mm. And once you dump this into the environment, it's gonna go into the water table, it actually evaporates, it goes into our air, ends up in our clouds, rains back on us. So we create this whole ecosystem of toxin.
glyphosate had actually been discovered in the 1950s, around 57, 58, by a Japanese researcher. And he had uh, put it on the shelf, I think, realizing that this, this toxin would be horrible in the environment. So he kind of discovered this organophosphate and had patented it. Monsanto bought that patent for pittance and then moved it into consumer use. And its first patents were really around its use as an antibiotic, not as a weed killer. Really? And so that is an interesting you know, little tidbit, is that they understood what this toxin was doing to biology, even though they've claimed, you know, continue to claim that this doesn't have any human bio biologic toxicity to it. They knew that it was killing life at a very basic level, at the anti at this microbial antibiotic effect of it. It's been repatented over the years as an antiparasite, as an antiviral, all these different things. And so they have seen that everything this touches, whether a plant or a bug, it kills. And the way in which it does that is interesting, that it actually blocks the ability of this enzyme pathway, which is called the shikimate pathway. These enzymes make the, uh, the ringed aromatic amino acids. So we already took one amino acid kind of out of the equation by, with glycine. And then by this glycine toxin organophosphate, we block the shikimate pathway and we suddenly lose the ability to make are ringed aromatic amino acids, which include things like tryptophan. Mm -hmm. and, and that's, you know, it's such a subtle marketing tool that the companies have used. Uh, glyphosate's now made by every chemical company on earth. The five big ones in the U.S. all make it. Uh, and most of it's actually made in China now. It came off patent in 2007. So everybody's making this chemical now. And what they continue to point out from a marketing standpoint is that, well, there is no human target because this enzyme pathway is just in bacteria and plants. Mm -hmm. And so if we put it there, it kills them. But since humans don't have this enzymatic pathway, the shikimate pathway, there is no target for glyphosate in the human. That's what they've been claiming. However, if you ask what is that enzyme pathway and what does it do, what it makes are what we call the essential amino acids, i.e. the amino acids the human body can't manufacture. The vast majority of, of the amino acids in those 26 we can make on our own. So four of those essential amino acids, so at least half of them are now taken out of the equation. And so they say, well, well this isn't important for humans because it just happens in plants. Well, humans rely on that plant or that bacteria to deliver those essential amino acids that we can't manufacture. So we've literally robbed ourselves of a subset of, of the alphabet. Imagine if you woke up in the morning and had to go to work and be as productive as you are today, but you can only use 19 of the 26 letters. Right. I think by and large the consumer has been so confused and blinded by this constant marketing, constant messaging that you know, genetically modified crops are a necessary thing to feed the world. Right. We have seven billion people. We have to feed them. We would have starvation if we didn't have GMO crops. And I've heard that before. Um, and so what is your, what is your take on that? Uh, you know, is, is there validity to the assertion that without GMO crops uh, we're going to have worldwide starvation? My take is no, not even close. If we took GMO off the market today, we would still be fe feeding the world with the same inefficacy that we are today. We have starvation. We have the biggest famine in human history happening over in Sub-Saharan Africa right now. There is zero news coverage. Right. There is zero political interest in the fact that right now there's over 100 million lives at risk of, of dying from starvation in, in the plains of Africa right now and uh, we have thousands and tens of thousands of people dying daily over there right now from starvation. So, number one, we're not feeding the world. Not because we're not growing food, but because we don't have the political infrastructure and the, and the societal awareness to distribute food correctly. So starvation is never a growth or, dis or production problem. I think it's always a political problem. Mm -hmm. Second piece of this is there was billions of people on the earth in 1995. 1996, we debuted GMO. We weren't starving of lack of production in 1995, so therefore we had to create GMO. So it's such an artificial argument that we would starve without GMO crops. We couldn't feed the world. It's totally bogus because we only have to back up 20 years to realize we were feeding the world then, we are feeding our world ineffectively even now with all of the GMO.
the FDA said we don't even need to test this stuff. It's completely safe. You ask the biotech industry, Monsanto on its website, no human tests are necessary. I say, yeah, a test is, undergo is, is underway on all of us. The problem is there's no control group, no monitoring, no experiment. However, when you look at the animal feeding studies, when you look at what people say when they get rid of GMOs, when you look at what doctors say when they prescribe non-GMO diets to thousands and thousands of patients, when you look at what livestock happen, what happens to livestock when they're taken off of GM soy and corn, according to the farmers and veterinarians, and when you look at the diseases that have actually gone up since GMOs were introduced, it tells a different story. And if you have an ounce of intelligence to think that this ignoramus that we call homo sapien can improve can improve on perfection can improve on the god-given seed the seed of life if you believe that man, this is called hubris in the ancient Greeks, this is what destroys man, is his arrogance, his belief that he can do things that he is not qualified to do, and the sign of an intelligent man is to know his limits. To know his limits. Really, we have to question what is going on out there, and our silence is complicity. The silent one is complicit in the crime. If you stand by and watch a crime happening, you're part of that crime. You're aiding and abetting that crime if you don't do something about it. The hadith says, As-sukut alamatu rida. Silence is the sign of contentment. Silence is the sign of contentment. We should be standing up. The Europeans went out and marched in large numbers to prevent genetically modified food. And yet, no, these things, people aren't even debating these things because we have an educational system that makes us docile, that makes us think, like the, the John Taylor Gatto said, it makes people accept orders even if they're stupid. It makes them accept. There's people that... You, I, there was an old lady in England, and... She was pouring tea, she had her cream there. And as she was pouring it, she said, you know something very strange about this cream. When I was young, I remember cream going off really fast. But this cream doesn't go off anymore. It'll last two weeks. My grandfather said, he had an orchard. And he used to tell us if we found a worm in the apple, he said, I wouldn't eat an apple a worm wouldn't eat. Seriously, think about that, people. I don't want to eat a tomato that doesn't bruise. You go into supermarkets now, and I, you think you're in a science fiction movie. The colors are different. Where are they getting apples like that? I don't remember apples that look like that. When I, I didn't remember strawberries like that. Seriously, you think this is what's happening. You're watching this thing happening before your eyes. We need to wake up and take our lives back. We should be encouraging organic farms. We should be encouraging organic gardens. We should be at the forefront of the urban homesteading movement. These are things that Muslims should be involved in.